This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. Well, I want to take it apart this morning because Revelation 5 is connected to the crucifixion of Jesus. It is con and Beth, the Beth, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It's connected to Passover. It's connected all the way back to Abraham. You see, God has a plan. The devil doesn't understand that plan. The, devil, the devil's playing checkers. God is playing 12-dimensional chess. And at the same time, the devil can only see four layers of it. Aren't you glad you're serving God? Now the Apostle John is there, and this, this is a prophetic, historical, pivotal event. I think it is just as pivotal as Moses parting the Red Sea. I think it is just as pivotal as Jesus dying on the cross. It has this kind of weight. And as we get into it, what we, what we will find, and every commentator agrees with this, that this scene, when you take all of Revelation chapter 5, is the greatest worship session ever recorded in the Word of God. And we're going to see why here in a moment. And it says, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back Se sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaim with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Underline that in your Bible, or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and to read the scroll or to look at it. Now what's interesting is I begin doing research on the scroll. Now writing, when in, in, in ancient literature, when you had a scroll that was written, that says it was written front and back, that, that represents the completeness of the plan. That there was something absolutely complete in what was being revealed that had been hidden. How many know God has a complete plan? The New International Commentary says scholars are now beginning to call that scroll the scroll of destiny. I like that. But it says that no man in the King James, no one in the New King James was able to open the scroll. And that's Udeus in Greek, which means nothing. There was no, no, to understand what that really means it can be translated this way. There was no human. There was no angel. There was no fallen angel. There was no Nephilim. There was no transugenic hybrid that we're going to see during the last days. And there was no demon able to open the scroll or to look at it. If you can't look at it, you don't know it exists. Think about that for a minute. The gates of hell that have been planning this war against God ever since Lucifer fell, 
did not know that God had a complete plan in place. They did not know it existed. The only time even heaven itself knew is when the Father had it in his hand. And the angel began to announce, is there anyone worthy? And that announcement resonated through heaven, it resonated through the earth, and it resonated through the underworld. And at that moment, can you imagine hell? There's what? There's a what? There's a scroll? Uh oh. Uh oh. I just love God. Seven we're going to see throughout the book of Revelation. One of the meanings that I think is, is, is in particular essential for understanding this and many other things in the book of Revelation. Seven represents absolute. There were seven seals, which meant that that parchment was absolutely sealed. No angel knew what was in it. Only God himself, this is a plan that God himself made, and only he knew it, and nobody else in all of creation knew it. And it was perfectly sealed and hidden. Now, I even believe that as we read the book of Revelation and we see some of the effects, there are many aspects of that that are still hidden because Jesus hasn't opened the seals. So when the devil reads the book of Revelation, he goes, huh? There are still things hidden. We can see some of the effects and we see some of the things. Oh. But we're going to see this number seven representing Jesus. Let's go on in verse five. Now, before I go there, I want to share. John began to weep. That's, can you, have you ever been in, in a place where there was such expectation? Now, here is the king of the universe with a scroll that has to be opened. You have this strong angel announcing, is anybody worthy? Nobody was found. John knows that he has been yanked up out of the first heaven, brought up into the third heaven, because he's supposed to write this stuff down. And as a prophet, moving in that prophetic unction, as a, he is a prophetic apostle, some might even think that may even fall on him. And so here he is, he's been tasked by God, i got to write down what's going on. I can't even look at the scroll because the, the, the angel says it's there, okay, it's there, but I can't even look on it. And he feels the weight and the magnitude of this historic event, and he begins to weep bitterly. It's like, is something going to impede what God wants? That this, this scroll is the centerpiece of revealing Jesus. And nobody can open it. Verse 5, But one of the elders said to me, Don't weep. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed. Underline that in your Bible. Has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. I looked and beheld, and in the midst of the throne and, the, and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the angels, stood a lamb. Not a lion, a lamb as though it had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the spirits of God sent into all the earth. And then he came and took the scroll out of the hand who, of him who sat on the throne. You see, there was one worthy. Now we're following the Lamb. There was always a verse in, in Hebrews, and it's in Hebrews 5, verses 7 and 9, that was always um, a paradox to me. Because it reads that in the life of Jesus, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with the vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, 
and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected. I, I, I'm thinking, God's perfect. So how can God be perfected? How can perfection become more perfection? It goes on to say, He became the author of eternal salvation to all who believe in Him. Not until God brought my attention to Revelation 5 did I ever understand that because it's talking about being the author of eternal salvation. Eternal salvation is not just about when you got saved. It is the redemption of all things, the getting back of this planet, the millennial reign, wiping it all away, new heaven, new earth. I'm looking forward to living in a universe that no demon, no devil, no Lucifer, nobody ever existed in, just Almighty God and His redeemed people. And the physics of that place, this bind model, bind, you know, this absolutely, you won't need a light in your refrigerator. Because in a closed box, it's still filled with light because there is no darkness, there is no shadow, there's no nothing. There's no sun because God himself lights that universe. Sign me up. But the realization came that the Greek word here is teleu which means to make perfect, to complete, to carry out through completing, to be found perfect, to bring to an end or a goal proposed, to bring to a closer fulfillment by event of prophecies of Scripture. And so we need to understand the significance of what's being said here in the book of Revelation. Now, don't cry, John, because the lion of the tribe of Judah is getting ready to open the scroll, and he looks up and he sees a Passover lamb. Jesus earned the right to take the scroll and to loose the seals because he gave his life on the cross and he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave until that moment... Until that was completed, in, in, the, in the plan of God, nobody could open the scrolls. God had determined, until there was a Passover lamb, until I fulfilled the promise I made to Abraham, that I required him to give his son a promise for me on the altar, and on that very spot, and open the door so that I could give my son to redeem humanity, until that was done, only that one the Lamb, and only the Lamb could open the scroll. Then it starts talking about the Lamb. Seven horns and seven eyes. How many know Jesus doesn't have seven physical eyes? This is prophetic imagery that is constantly used in prophetic words, historically, with the Hebrew people, horns represent rulership and power. And, and eyes represent insight and wisdom. So when he looks at the lamb, because the lamb has raised victorious over death, hell, and the grave, he has absolute power. I need to say that again. Today, right now, Jesus has absolute power he has absolute insight and he has absolute wisdom not a thing the Illuminati can do not a thing the deep state can do not a thing any cabal on the planet can do gets by the sight of Jesus there's not one thing that they can do that will surprise God. But what we're gonna, when you look at this scroll, everything in that scroll is going to surprise them. Now, they have studied the book of Revelation probably be more than the body of Christ has because they're really working hard on bringing a lot of what it says come to pass. They're working overtime on it. But there are aspects of it that are still a mystery. They'll take apart the Greek, they'll take apart the Aramaic, they'll take apart everything they can, but it is withheld from them, and the entire world will know, 
as Jesus begins the process of opening the seals because it is a revealing. Now as he does this, the greatest worship session ever recorded in the Word of God because you know why? It is game over. Even while the Antichrist is thanking uh, the, the son of perdition, Antichrist, because, I mean, no, there's an Antichrist spirit. There are many spirits in the world, but there's going to be the personification of what the Bible calls, you know, the, the, the Christians now call the Antichrist. The proper biblical term is the son of perdition. As he's ascending into power, what he doesn't realize is even before he makes that ascent, it's game over. Because the lamb got the scroll. <laughs> oh man and there's not a thing that hell can do about it there's not a thing that they can plan there's evidence with everything that's going on with CERN not only, not only opening up what I call dimension zero the hell to begin releasing things and things that have been captive since the judgment of God in Genesis 6 there's evidence every time that they, they cause a collision, there's something called a spacelet that's created. That is a pre-Higgs boson particle. There's nothing on the planet that can contain it. And so it simply goes down to the Earth's core. And some of the scientists have been worried you get too many of those, you could turn the Earth into a brown dwarf star. That's how powerful that little particle is. But at the same time, when you look at D-Wave computers and everything else they're doing, there is a chance that they're going to try to turn the earth itself into a particle weapon to vaporize Jesus as he comes back in the clouds. The Bible does not say that he disappears at the brightness of their weapon. It says that they disappear at the brightness of his coming. So what is a particle weapon Using advanced watcher technology, what has that got to do with someone who can speak worlds into existence? You see how the deception, even in the gates of hell, is there. But now, picking up in verse 8. Now when he had taken the scroll and the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having harps, and the golden bowls of incense, full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and hath redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us a kingdom of priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. And then I looked and heard the voice of many angels round the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, and the numbers of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain worthy is the lamb who was slain re-emphasizing that only the lamb was worthy to open the scroll to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing now because Jesus is found worthy heaven begins to erupt and I believe part of the scene that we have, all of our tears are collected in heaven. Uh, my friend Steve Quayle wrote an outstanding book on, on our tears and how that they're kept in heaven. But your prayers, every prayer of every saint has been collected and are in those golden centers. Censors. I'll get it right here in a minute. And they're falling down with the censors. Because ever since Adam and Eve, there has been a prayer for the one that would come and crush the serpent's head. Revelation 5, you can begin hearing the crunch. And so all the prayers, the prayers for Messiah to come, the prayers for us for God to change this world and to take control. All of that is now laid before him in this worship service as they sang a new song. 
Now, with the King James, with the New King James Version, they simply translate it the way the King James does, but it, kingdom of kings and priests is not a proper translation. It's kingdom of priests. And I love that, once again, the way the Jew, complete Jewish Bible translates this. You made them into a kingdom for God to rule. Koanim to serve him, and they will rule over the earth. When you understand what happened in Genesis 11 with the Tower of Babel, that God divorced humanity, but then he set into place a plan to get it all back and to judge the very principalities and powers and rulers that aligned themselves with Nimrod at the Tower of Babel. And so what God has been doing out of every kindred, every tribe, every tongue, He is creating not a nation but a kingdom that He can rule. Nobody's going to get to rule it but Jesus. You say, well, I have a crown. If you're lucky. Paul, dealing with that in 1 Corinthians, talks about the judgment seat of Christ. Now, let me know that if you're under the blood, you're never judged for your sin, but you're judged for what you do to accomplish for the kingdom. You're judged for your works. And everything that he does through you, everything that you get your old self out of the way so that he can do through you, becomes gold, silver, and precious stones. What do you do with gold, silver, and precious gems? You make a crown. Because the principle that we learn from the feast of the Lord is you never appear before the Lord empty-handed. And there will be saints that show up empty-handed. I got saved and I sat down and Lord, you did not get one stinking thing done out of me from the time that I made you my Lord and Savior. I just parked it because I had my Willy Wonka golden ticket. Not realizing that the Apostle Paul declares, we are saved unto good works. That crown is going to hit your head just long enough for you to take it off and throw it at his feet. Because he's King of kings and Lord of lords. But God is building a kingdom. And the only way into that kingdom is by trusting in the Lamb. <laughs> and then he and, and David Stern knew enough not to say Levites the Kohanim the ones that ministered to God because how many know by the time you get there there ain't no ministering to people it's all about God there will be nobody outside heaven that's, that's the door greeter greeting everybody and making them feel welcome everybody is going to be in the church service falling before the throne in worship. And it will not be a seeker-friendly church service. It will be a creator-friendly church service. Now that's a hint for us. The closer our, our church services and the way we do things get closer to being God-sensitive, the more heaven will come down. But let's not stop there. I'm getting ready to get to the good part. 13. Now, I, ta I take the word of God literally unless by definition they're using prophetic imagery. 13 and 14, there's no prophetic imagery in it. It is literal. Okay? And every creature which is in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And such as are in the sea and all them that are in them. I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and the land to the Lamb forever and ever. Now stop there and let's rewind just a minute. At that moment, every fallen angel, every Nephilim spirit, Every member of the Illuminati, every congressman and senator up there debating and trying to do things to stuff their own pockets with money, 
in every church, in every mosque, in every, every assembly, every single person on earth, every single creature in heaven, and every single creature in hell at that moment will stop and they will find coming out of their mouth these words. Can you imagine? This is when Lucifer knows something is being revealed that I didn't know. I mean, he's sitting there and he's getting his war plans on and he's commanding demons to do this and Nephilim to do this and all these humans are working with me and I'm getting ready to topple God and all of a sudden he stops and he looks up and says, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him that sat on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And after it comes out of his lips, he looks at all the other guys and says, "Uh Uh-oh! I wasn't expecting that. (laughs) <laughs> Can you imagine all these Luciferians in the, in the halls of the UN? They stop and go, what just happened? There was a universal madness that took over the earth. I think that at that moment, the sons of Ishmael are going to come home. Not the sons of Esau. Every child of Ishmael just confessed that all power, glory, and honor belongs to the Lamb. Ishmael's eyes will be opened. Every rabbi on planet Earth. Uh Uh-oh. The scales will fall off. The veil that was put on Moses' face. And why did the Apostle Paul bring that? Because they began already veiling themselves from Moses. Moses, the New Testament, the story of Jesus, it'll all make sense. And, and Paul said, and they will be saved in one day. They will lay down their Talmud, they'll lay down their Kabbalah, and they'll pick up the Bible and worship the Lamb. Now I've got 49 seconds. There are those trying to say, that were like second seal, third seal, fourth seal has been opened. I don't think any of them have been opened because this hasn't happened yet. How many know this? This is a historic thing that you can mark on your calendar when this happens. When this happens, the seals will begin to be opened, and God's going to open up a can of whoop everybody that doesn't yield to Jesus. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.